Hey Club Scrappers, I'm Trisha at Club Scrap with the Western Page Kit Workshop. Thanks for joining me here and I hope you have your instructions ready. One of the beautiful Western collections, your favorite guillotine trimmer, and an accordion pocket file. If you're new around here and you haven't made your accordion pocket file yet, please reach out to us so we can help you obtain all the information and the supplies needed to make your own organizer so that scrapbooking the efficient way is much, much easier. Okay, I'm gonna set aside the beautiful ribbons and other embellishments that came with this collection, including some fun charms and some manila tags. We have a beautiful masking stencil this month, and this works great with our mists, with um, gesso or paints, and also with inks and an ink applicator brush. And we have a little vintage envelope here. We'll set that aside, and that leaves us with our paper and photo mats. First, let's get our photo mats organized into the proper pocket that uh, we're gonna organize for each double page spread. So take two brown photo mats and place them both in pocket one and two, and two burgundy photo mats also pocket one and two. Then find one brown photo mat. Let's place that in pocket three and four. Place three gold photo mats in pocket five and six, two blue photo mats also in five and six, and finally one burgundy and one blue in pocket seven and eight. Okay, so next let's put our paper in the order in which we'll be trimming it. And if you've been around for any length of time, you know that this is the next step. What I like to do is hold the paper in my arms and then find the sheets and lay them on my trimmer base. So the first thing I want you to find is this beautiful rope print and I'm gonna place that face down, just one of them, face down on the base of my trimmer, followed by this gorgeous paisley print, also face down on my trimmer base. Then I'll look back in the stack a little bit and find one brown plane, then one burgundy plane. After that, let's find, probably from the back of the stack, there's a sheet of really uh, varying widths of strips. Put that face down and then also one more sheet of cut aparts. We'll flip that over as well. Next we'll continue on by sorting and finding that brown plain, just one of those, and there should be one more burgundy, one paisley print, one blue plain, two gold planes, a blue plain, and then one more rope print. So that's the order that we'll be using all 12 sheets plus the cut aparts that we provided for you. We'll be trimming everything needed for all eight layouts at the same time. And that is what keeps us really efficient. So let's start by taking that rope print. We'll put it in the trimmer with the rope on the left. And let's find a nine and a quarter. If you're new, again, before every cut, if you're using this trimmer, please make sure that you stabilize on this clear bar to keep the paper from buckling when the blade comes down. Then slide down to four. So the two widest pieces, the one with the rope and this other wide piece, let's place both of them in pockets seven and eight. And then we'll pick up this narrower strip. We're gonna cut this horizontally at 11, eight and a quarter, five and a half, and two and three quarters. All four of these pieces will be placed in pocket one and two. Next, let's take the paisley print, and it really doesn't matter which way it goes into the trimmer, it's pretty much all the same. And we just have three simple cuts. We'll cut at 10, and all the way down to four, and two. Okay, this narrow strip that's in the base right now goes in pocket three and four. The next two pieces, so it's a narrow piece that has more yellow or gold, and then this other wide piece that goes in five and six, and I'm putting these pieces in the pocket at an angle that still allows me to see what the label is on the pocket. And then we have one more narrow piece. This one goes in three and four with the other. So far, we do have a scrap. It's this one from the first piece we trimmed, a very tolerable scrap, if I do say so myself. And then now let's take, just make sure we have the brown plane. We'll uh, make two cuts at big numbers, thus creating very skinny pieces. So 11 and three quarters, 11 and a half, 
ten and a half, eight and a half, and five and a half. Let's rotate this five and a half by twelve, and we'll trim it eight and a quarter and four and a half. Rotate the four and a half so it's now horizontal. And we're going to trim that horizontally at three. Place these in pocket seven and eight. Then you have two more rectangles that should be the same size, three and four. This wide strip and the one that's next to it is just slightly wide, <laughs> one and two. And then we have a skinnier guy. He goes in seven and eight. And then you have two really skinny guys. These both go in three and four. Okay, moving right along to the burgundy plane. All right, we will cut at nine and three quarters and five and a half. Now we're gonna rotate so this piece is horizontal. We'll cut at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. You just made three pieces that are the same size. Those go in pockets seven and eight. And this little thin guy goes in one and two. Take the next strip. Now, you gotta really just pay attention here. You'll be fine. Well, this is a four and a quarter by 12 right now. We're gonna cut it horizontally at 10 and a quarter and four and a quarter. This is a square. We'll just pocket that in three and four. And the next piece, we're gonna trim it vertically at four. Pocket that in three and four. It did make a little, this guy is a scrap. He joins this one, this other huge scrap. Okay, now we have this one and three quarter inch piece. We're gonna trim that horizontally at three and a quarter, making our final scrap. So this larger piece goes in three and four, and this little guy becomes one of just three pieces not used in the entire layout making process. This long strip goes in one and two. That concludes all of the trimming required for just the papers, and now we have some cut aparts. So I'm going to turn to page one of my instructions, and I'm looking at this image, and I'm also using this sheet. This image has a map of all of the layouts that the pieces are used on, so I'm going to place this into the trimmer with the words, These are my people. That's a famous song by Johnny Cash. Um, into the trimmer at about 11 inches. I'm lining up the registration marks on the edges of the cut aparts with the edge of my stainless steel blade. And then we'll slide to 10 and a quarter. And nine and a half. Down to, this is an odd measure measurement. I'm getting like seven and seven eighths, but just line up those marks. Five and three quarters, and finally three. So this Chase Your Dreams goes in three and four. I'm going to pick up all the rest of these pieces and try to maintain the order that they landed in so it's easier to deal them out into the pockets. The rope, three and four. Home is next to you. Oh, what's one and two? I'm going to use these pages for a rustic wedding I went to. The whole bridal, bridal party was in um, cowboy boots and it was at a, a really cool refurbished barn. Okay, so this goes in one and two. Life's a dance. Um, the next two really pretty saddle stitch strips go in seven and eight. And then these are my people also. Oh, that goes in five and six. Then this next piece we'll place in the trimmer with the words run wild on the right side and we'll cut at eleven and a quarter. Ten and a half, eight and three quarters, and five. Rotate. We just have two cuts. First one is at nine and three quarters, and seven. This larger piece, put that in three and four. The Paisley journaling prompt, five and six. And this ain't my first rodeo, seven and eight. Pick up the very next strip to your uh, right of the blade and we'll place it with howdy on the right and trim at 10 and a quarter. Six and a half. Five. 
and three and a half. So this piece goes in pocket three and four. Happy Trails, three and four also. I don't have an accent, but y'all do. Seven and eight. <laughs> then we have these miscellaneous objects. If you want, you could fussy cut these at this time, but I'm just going to separate them into three individual pieces. The boot and the horseshoe both will be used on five and six, and the hat, seven and eight. Now we have three separate elements. I'll place them in the trimmer with the word howdy on the right, and because that's the smallest one, so he goes on the right. And I'll separate these. All right, the hat and boot combo, one and two. Yeehaw, seven and eight, and howdy, five and six. Stagecoach on the right, we'll cut at nine and three quarters, six and a half, three and a quarter. These three that are the same size are actually designed to fit perfectly, and you'll find this on the manila tags that we've provided, which is kind of handy. Okay, so I don't leave footprints in the sand, I leave boot tracks in the mud. That's five and six. Our journaling prompt with the boot, seven and eight. And the horseshoe journaling prompt one and two. We have this long strip, five and six. Oh, stagecoach, I'm sorry. That also goes in five and six. Then we have these little guys. And honestly, you know, you just took scissors and we kind of look at the distance between this artwork and the edge of the paper. We'll match that on the straight edge and just trim with scissors. And you could also eyeball, cut a little too much off of that. I'm going to create a point. I'm going to have to like, improvise on that one. You just kind of start at that corner and you go toward the point. You're in good shape. All right, run wild, one and two, live free, three and four, love strong, seven and eight. Could have used them all together, but I kind of just shared the love. All right, I'm going to set my trimmer aside. Let's do some dry fit assembly. The remaining 12 by 12s that are not trimmed are the basis for all the upcoming layouts. And this top sheet is actually the base for layout number eight. So if I look at my instructions, I go to the final page, page four, look at layouts seven and eight. The base of my layouts are burgundy and brown. So if I take this pile, this entire pile, and I leave it left of center on my work surface, slide the top sheet over, and now in front of me I have the base for layout seven and eight, burgundy and brown. And the same is true. So you can just keep sliding, and now here's the base for layout five and six. Slide again, and I have the base for three and four, and so on. And that way this is just a nice easy way to just, again, make sure you have everything where you need it. When I create the instructions, the first two things listed on every layout ingredient list are the bases for the layouts, because sometimes when you look at the picture, it can be a little bit difficult to tell. Then I'll take everything out of pocket seven and eight, and a lot of times it's tempting to accidentally take everything out of pocket one and two, but it's going from the back to the front. That way, as we're going, if something got missed, it's easy to identify which layout it lives on, because you'll have been wondering, Where's the misfiled piece? Or you know, that didn't make any sense, but later it will make sense, okay? All right, so I'm gonna take um, the larger strips that we have with this rope print, place that down in the lower left corner here, and then the other big portion goes on the right. And then we can take our pays our saddle stitched maroon colored piece. Then we have this brown strip. We'll add that just above the rope print here and then nest it on top with the blue. Okay, then looks like I have three smaller mats that are going to go within this open area. I love this little trick. It's like film strip style. Very nice. A vertical burgundy will go here along with the I don't have an accent and the yeehaw and our hat, which will eventually be fussy cut. Then over on this side, we have a four by six photo. For these two brown pieces, I confess I discovered a trimming error. So hopefully I was able to go really way back and fix this for you. But one of these pieces is designed to fit perfectly with the manila tag. And then the 
boot fits right on top of that. And then the other piece goes above. And what's neat about the fit for this is that this other piece kind of ends up being level at the top edge and everything kind of puzzles in beautifully. And then finishing with the Love Strong, I attached this with some foam adhesive circles and of course topped the manila tag with some of this beautiful cotton ribbon. Girl Grand ribbon was used to wrap twice around this vertical mat and then just tied in a simple knot. Let's take a look at that finished layout. Here's page eight. And I've got the fussy cut hat along with a bronze boot charm. And here's my twice wrapped. I had I was able to provide two full yards of this beautiful grow grain ribbon. And I have that wrapped around there quite generously. This is the other half of the page with our ribbon added to the tag. And I've taken a, um, let me show you real quick. This is our ink applicator brush. And I took some club scrap ink, this is in the earth color, and just loaded my brush with some ink and then inked the edges of this tag. The other thing I did in the background, and it's a little bit subtle, but I think it's absolutely stunning, is used the stencil along with this brush and the earth ink to apply the paisley border to the background and I did that before I attached anything to this page. So just generously stencil around the outer perimeter of the burgundy, like the upper half, and you're going to really add a lot of beautiful texture to your layout in a very simple way. So we're back to our dry fit layout. All I have to do now is do the slide and stack. Alright, so I'm going to slide layout 7 on top of layout 8 and then slide the next page over. I still have my two piles. My empty and then my filling okay and then this is the base for layouts five and six so I'll take everything out of the pocket labeled five and six this is a very simple assembly and it's kind of tricky I love how this all worked out but I'm going to take this narrow printed strip and apply it to the far left edge of layout number five and then this there's a border strip that has just these little decorative elements on it. No words. That's going to be placed vertically right next to the printed strip. And then we have this other larger piece. Now what this gives the illusion of is that the full size base sheet was this and this was matted in blue. But no, it, it's just kind of neat. So we'd have three pieces of paper on top of our 12 by 12 blue plane. Across the top we'll add these are my people. And below that a long strip of the blue ribbon. You can just stretch it all the way across and tape the ends around to the back just to kind of add a little bit of anchoring and strengthen the, the title a little bit more with the color. Then we'll add two horizontal mats. One will be closer to the matted border and the other will be closer to the right edge. And that will leave a nice little space for a manila tag with our quote. We're also going to place the fussy cut horseshoe in that spot and the fussy cut stagecoach over here. Fussy cutting is an option. I also did take the stencil and add a little bit of stenciling. Just anywhere there was like a little bit of a plain page, I was able to really kick it up a notch. Okay, now we have some horizontal blue mats here, a vertical Gold mat again wrapped generously with two loops of grow grain ribbon. I inked the edge of this lovely journaling prompt. Added the word howdy with some foam adhesive and then added the boot to the lower right corner. Cute as a bug's ear. On the howdy, I also took a like a two inch folded length of the plaid ribbon taped it to the back before I attached it with foam adhesive. This was also attached with foam adhesive. And then over here you can see the finished layout with the grain border running just beneath the, the main title and a small piece attached. I ran into a problem because I didn't want to dis I went, didn't want to cover the page title with the ribbon coming off of the tag. So just a short piece there. And then you can see my stenciling on the lower right hand corner of this layout. This was a fussy cut project that still only took up less than a minute because I was didn't keep a lot of the detail in the stagecoach and I really like the look of that. All right, I'll set these aside and then we're going to do the slide and stack. So this blue page on the left gets moved over and top that with one of the golds. We'll do one slide and now I have the bases for layouts three and four. 
And we'll empty the pocket for three and four. All right, I'll begin with my really large rope print, or border strip, I guess it's not the print, it's a border strip. Place that on the right edge. And then another large element here is gonna be this piece of the boots. And there's gonna be a burgundy square that fits right into that space. This is the layout where I used the really cool looking vintage envelope and I took the stagecoach cut apart and I kind of had it partially coming out of the envelope and I added a little bit piece of folded stapled ribbon to the right edge of this. There are two smaller brown mats. Those are gonna tuck in sort of behind the envelope here on this side. And then this gorgeous, this is one of my favorite ribbons. It comes in a limited number of colors. So if I can find a match, I try to use it because I think it's stunning. I'm gonna just, stretch a piece out next to this border strip sort of to define the area a little bit more and we'll have that behind here then on the left okay this is where we're going to use the two ends of that gorgeous paisley print that we trimmed way when we got started the bluest portion along the top and then it's mate along the bottom edge here i hope you can see this okay then we're going to define that area even more with one of those narrow brown strips. I usually use bookbinding glue from a needle tip applicator to attach that. Now we're going to add our main title. And I was fortunate to have a piece that would fit right into that spot, kind of draw the eye, and then tying in the burgundy as well with this brown mat on the left that should fit right into the opening. Grab a manila tag. In this case, instead of nesting something onto the tag, I took the stencil and just stenciled the whole thing to make it real decorative. Topped it with some of that burgundy ribbon. And then we've got our happy trails. Live free added. And I inked the edges with some ink. And then we can add a cute little uh, bronze charm to that if we wish. Here's the finished layout where I actually, before adhering this mat, I made a little mark on each side of the boot to indicate where my photo mat overlapped and I took a craft knife and just cut along the top edge of the boot so I could slide the photo mat in behind it. Here, instead of just using one ribbon, I used a double thickness of the plaid and the uh, burgundy ribbon folded in half and stapled. Again, these two ribbons staple beautifully and then this little piece just running behind there, adding some balance to the color I have going on with the layout. On the left side, um, I tied some of the plaid ribbon around this narrow piece. You know, it'd be really just sweet to have a small photo maybe in this area. And then here's my stenciled manila tag with a buckle and boot charm. Next, we'll slide again onto our stack. And then the blue comes over. And now in front of us, we have the base for layouts one and two. And you can see the advantage of not adhering anything at this point because if something got misfiled, we would be able to go back and fix it. Whereas if it's already adhered, it makes it a little bit more challenging. Okay, so I'm looking at, on page three of my instructions, the first picture there. We'll take this larger brown strip and place it right along the right edge here. And next to it, we can add, home is next to you. I love that quote. Then on the left, we have a triple mat. So we have this larger burgundy strip nested with slightly skinnier brown, nested with this wonderful quote in the blue. Now that blue carries over what's happening on the right side with the blue base over there. Now I'm gonna take two burgundy photo mats and place them on the right edge within that opening, followed by a manila tag that we can add some plaid ribbon to later and a journaling prompt, which is designed to nest onto the tag. On the right edge here, this is kind of cool. I just trimmed four two and three quarter inch squares from the rope print that will fit. And I think maybe, yes, yeah, someone is right over here. So those all go in a row there. And then two vertical mats, one higher than the other, so that we can place our hat boot combo and then run wild. We'll balance that off on the other side. And if you want, you can tuck that behind there. Now we have this little piece here and I'm gonna show you a nifty little trick. Just cut point. Oh, we'll do it on the other half because I did accidentally make a slice there. We're just going to cut a point into this. And I'm using my fabric scissors. Here's my little point. And then I've got a piece of plaid ribbon. So what I do is fold the ribbon in half lengthwise and cut at an angle to, to make another point in the ribbon. That's a slick way to do it. 
and the ribbon is just narrow enough that it nests lovely onto this burgundy strip. Now if you want you could um, adhere that maybe with a glue line or whatever and this end of the strip will go underneath the brown mat and this will sit on top maybe with some foam adhesive. <laughs> okay finished layout here we go. Here's the right side again added a little boot charm there we've got our plaid ribbon on the manila tag this has been adhered with the help of our grid ruler to keep things nice and level and evenly spaced. A little bit of stenciling just on the blue over here, all the visible areas. You're going to have so much fun with that stencil. For the left page, I finished this out. Here's my nested, which would have been a scrap, <laughs> along with a cute little buckle charm to balance things out. It's level with the bottom edge of this little cut apart attached with foam adhesive circles. That is layout number one. That wraps up all of the dry fit portion. The only thing left to do now is for you to grab your adhesive, some photos, and some great memories. Whether it is a rustic wedding, a trip to Arizona, a night with your pals, a masculine birthday. I can think of countless things to use uh, for this. It's just a wonderful masculine theme. Um, that I hope you really enjoy. So y'all have a great time and if you enjoyed this collection I want to invite you to join in on the card making tutorial with this Western kit as well. We're making some really fun cards, a total of 16 in fact, along with two really gorgeous card folios perfect for gift giving. I'll see you right back here for next month's pages. Thanks for joining me.